Welcome to your 12th web scraping tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to go over um, another element of web scraping and that is making sure that we collect the, UR the correct URLs and we don't collect parameterized URLs because a lot of times the browser sends information relative to your session ID or other parameters to the server over the URL so we don't want to get caught um, requesting the same URL multiple times but add different parameters to it. So I'll just show an example of this. So we'll import URL lib, um, we'll import beautiful soup, and we will import um, URL parse. And this is actually from BS4 because I had to install it differently. It's actually much easier to install Python modules for Linux. I was just using my virtual machine, I mean not my virtual machine, my uh, VPS, and it was so much easier to install the Python modules. So next what I'll do is I'll say HTML text is equal to um, URL web dot URL open dot read and we're going to open New York Times dot com and we actually have to add HTTP so next what we're going to do is we're going to open this in beautiful soup so soup equals uh, beautiful Soup. I think I spelled it right. HTML text. Next, we're going to say for href tag in the soup document. We say for tag in soup dot find all. Um, actually, this has to be a capitalized A. We do. We're looking for an A tag and. It has to have a, a hypertext reference, so href equals true. And next, show you need a colon there. We'll say v1 equals URL parse dot URL parse um, tag of href. And we're going to add the host name to that. So host name. And next, we're just going to say bra equals um, tag of href. Um, and then we'll just print out bra. We'll run this. F5. Actually, F5, we get an error. Um, expected a string buffer. Oh, um, where does expected string buffer? Let me just try comparing this to a string. Um, line six, soup, beautiful soup, HTML text. So it's on line six, and that's where soup equals beautiful soup. Oh, we actually don't want to give it a string. We want to give it a HTML file. So we're not going to actually read I think I do that every tutorial. So this is just the list of URLs we get from Yahoo, or actually from New York Times. And you can see HTTP New York Times and type, go to, and all this random stuff on the end. Um, and HPW. 
look, this is the exact same link. Why is it in there twice? Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, these have all these random things added onto the end. So what we actually want is just the raw URL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print B1 instead. And we'll see B1 is just the host name. So run this. And this is actually all the different sites it's visiting. So it's going to New York Times quite a bit. It goes to blogs New York Times. It goes to spider bites. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to all New York Times sites, which is what we expect. And so we'll go back, and we're gonna not we're gonna print um, just the path. So path, and see what this gives us. Okay. So the path isn't, it, it gets rid of all the parameters because the URL parse library, it separates the URL by path, host name, um, and then all the variables you add onto the end when you're submitting data to your server. So we don't actually care about all those parameters because sometimes every time you visit a website, it gives you a different, um, it adds some random string onto the end that's your session ID or something. And we don't want our web scraper to get confused and be like, oh, these are all different URLs because it'll be it'll feed you a different random number infinitely many times. And you'll just be stuck that stuck there. And that's what you call a spider trap. Um or actually this isn't like they're not intentionally making it to trap spiders, but they're making it um this is just something that naturally occurs on websites that cause w web spiders to mess up. So we don't want our website to mess up. So here we have just all of the all of these um, paths, which is great. Um, yeah, and it looks like all of the articles end in HTML, but we actually can't be sure of that when we're releasing it onto the internet because some of them, they put the index file in an empty directory and then they just use the slash. They don't put the the actual HTML or the file name on the end. So we're gonna be able to handle whatever we want. So let's go back and we'll, set, we'll actually say, um, We'll say b1 equals this dot host name, and we'll actually make this b2. So print string of b1 plus string of b2. See what that gives us? Oh wow, that added New York Times, which is the top level domain or the, the host name, I guess you call it and then you add the path to the end. So this basically eliminates all of those parameters that random sites add onto the end to make their, to communicate with their server. Because we don't want our spider going in an infinite loop. That would be very bad. And when we're actually adding the URLs to our URLs stack or queue, we actually want to add HTTP the front, so HTTP plus string, and this is going to be called new URL equals that, and then we'll print new URL. Try it. Okay, so these are all of the URLs we found on that website. So this has been your 12th web scraping tutorial.